can art be both silly and profound? Absurdism by way of the human condition? Does art need to fit into pre-established boxes for us to categorize and oversimplify? What if Godot actually arrived? We are happy! We are happy! Let me rephrase. Go watch Swiss Army Man, Daniel Kwan, and Daniel Scheinert's previous film and tell me that a movie with Daniel Ratcliffe, hey, that's another Daniel, as a farting corpse speedboat. <laughs> no, yeah. Huh. Tell me that doesn't say profound things about who we are and who we aspire to be. Let a movie challenge you. Trust me, it's an absolutely incredible film that occupies at least four of the seven types of storytelling posted online by tedious people. Want to know how deep the Swiss Army rabbit hole goes? There will be entire film studies courses dedicated to the limitless, profound absurdity of the Daniels filmography. Because somehow they outdid themselves. And I'm not even sure everyone knows the absolute mountain they climbed to make everything everywhere all at once. So put on your hiking boots, kids. We're going everywhere. Yay! Are you ready to follow the white rabbit down the hole? Everything Everywhere All at Once is a 2022 film written, directed, and produced by Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinert. It is strongly influenced and grounded in the longing works of one Wong Kar Wai, the entirety of Hong Kong action cinema as a whole, and somehow encompassing an entire universe of storytelling within a movie that feels nothing short of profound. A clear embrace of the chaotic, unempathetic society that applies untold and egregious pressures onto younger and younger generations. You can be anything you want to be, as long as you're exactly who I decided you would be. Hilariously and surprisingly, the Daniels started thinking about the multiverse concept for a film all the way back in 2010. The Daniels were researching modal realities and becoming discouraged over the years when two key pieces of entertainment loudly announced they were eating the Daniels' lunch. Those two pieces being Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and Rick and Morty Season 2. The multiverse was catching on, and then Marvel ate it! Which is also when Marvel unexpectedly and hilariously became a part of this story, but probably not in the way you think. All movies need funding, especially for pre-production and figuring out how one would put together a film of this level of complexity. I'm saying they don't just hand you a check for $30 million. Enter Joe and Anthony Russo, flush with Avengers cash. Turn down the what? and make a film they did. But first we gotta talk about Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinert, a duo who originally got their start directing music videos and online shorts. Here's what I mean. In the turn down for what music video they directed, that's Daniel Kwan right there. He wanted me to dance in this video and that's it. Um, right. And then it became, it became so much more than that. And like honestly that's what this whole video is. Like we wanted to make a video where we hump things and they break. There, there genuinely was like an interesting amount of excitement online about like a sexualized Asian lead and like the fact of the diversity of the cast and the kind of like sexual liberation of them all. Then I mention they shot a music video where their future stunt coordinator tumbles down the up escalator for four minutes. Idiotically profound. 
Swiss Army Man was their first feature. Trust me, you want to see this movie. When envisioning their next film, a theoretical movie about kung fu and existentialism, they first thought of one. Jackie Chan. And in the end, cast Michelle Yeoh in a movie about motherhood and acceptance that generations change. Oh, Turn down for what? A story of a family searching for meaning in the vast, uncaring emptiness of the multiverse. Is there some version of me out there that's successful? Happy? Is anyone truly happy? Is anyone truly successful? Am I the problem? The core of this movie is three people, one of whom is already enlightened. This is a very it is unsustainable to hold the weight of the entire world against everyone, everywhere, all at once. That's the everything bagel. You can absolutely tell this directing duo came from music videos because they pull off a movie that looks like it cost at least $100 million, but the budget of this film was only $25 million. Turn down for what? And to illustrate that succinctly, that's less than a single episode of Stranger Things this season. And as we explore this rabbit hole, it has brought us to casting. Michelle Yeoh, Kihei Kwan, Stephanie Hsu, and James Freaking Hong, Jamie Lee Curtis, and featuring Randy Newman as the voice of Raka Kuni. They all have to play three completely distinct people in scenes that were shot wildly out of order. Ultimate Boogie <laughs> This movie began shooting in January 2020 and was shut down on their last shot in March 2020 because of, let me, COVID? They achieved this scene by splicing together footage from three different locations, which is what I mean by the DIY methodology that Daniel employ in filmmaking. To achieve the shots of Evelyn flying through the multiverse, that's just footage Daniel shot while walking around the city. He just shot it on a little cheap camera. <laughs> then they projected it back onto Michelle using LED light panels. This movie is like the dollar store version of the much ballyhoo Disney volume. I'm not even sure it's possible to talk about the creation of this film in any definitive capacity. It's a masterpiece and a masterclass. This movie is the rabbit hole. We all want to believe that everything happens for a reason, even when the plural of verse is uncaring. The rabbit hole goes through the multiverse. Let me put it more succinctly. How many movies can take credit for bringing Kihei Kwan back into the fold? Imagine taking an acting break from the time you were 13 all the way to the time you were 50. There is so much to this story. The story of Ki. Kihei Kwan thought he was about to be the next big character actor at the ripe old age of 12. Hollywood stopped calling him except for the same old Asian stereotype roles. As a teenager, I'm sure that does stuff to you. So he retired from acting, but that wasn't where his story ended. Key went to the USC film school where he received his film degree and went off to try all matter of filmmaking jobs. He did some stunt work, including being the stunt rigger on the original X-Men. Yeah, it's a deep rabbit hole. He also did assistant stunt direction on Jet Li's The One. Is that not adorable enough for you? Buckle up. He's still friends with Corey Feldman and Sean Astin, and his entertainment lawyer who negotiated and signed this film is Chunk himself, Jeff Cohen. Hot damn, the Goonies did stick together. 
And you could put Key's comeback pretty safely in the hands of John M. Chu because it was in theaters in 2018 watching Crazy Rich Asians that made Key understand that Hollywood had changed. And maybe it was time for a comeback. And what a comeback it was. The decisions we didn't make. Pretty apt metaphor. Waymond is the only character in this movie that doesn't really even have an arc. He attacks problems with empathy and often silliness, usually to ensure things don't get worse than they already are. Waymond keeps his family together. Evelyn and Joy save the multiverse from... Oh, from themselves. Well, the antagonist of this movie is their daughter. This, like, reverse Star Wars, man. The thing this movie does incredibly well is make you feel every single universe. The movie itself is set in the least successful of all universes. The most incapable are the chosen ones. I love that. When people say multiverse, I think there is a disconnect when some people are talking about fifth dimensional choice farming movies and others are hyping IP exploitative lore burritos. Space Jam 2 is really not a good time. The former is a slowly growing subgenre of art films examining humanity on a maximal level, all of us, everywhere, all at once. A litany of existences, but somehow ultimately emerging at true enlightenment, arriving back where you started, full of wisdom. Enlightenment in this movie is letting go and embracing our corpse. Multiverse is just a buzzword that is taking on unintended meaning over time. Why have one Spider-Man when you can have three? You were not the sum of your choices if somehow out there there exists a version of you that has done everything the exact opposite of you have. What makes you you is your ability to exist as a cohesive person outside of your choices. It's how you respond to adversity. Everything in movies is just a buzzword until you do something interesting with it. Say something meaningful. Do something strange just to do it. Or maybe true enlightenment is picking other people off the ground when they need help. Or to put it far too literally, everything, everywhere, all at once is a movie about finding your joy. We are all conundrums. Every version of ourselves is desperately crying for oxygen in a world that will deny us that. The existence of self, the one true choice, the nihilistic bagel, or the joy of the googly eye. No more googly eyes! It all comes down to laundry and taxes. It's honestly a simple life philosophy. Amid being a superhero or a movie star or a dimension possessed by the tender love that only hot dog fingers can provide, find someone you can do laundry with. The happiest we see this family in all realities is singing karaoke together. It's the first thing we see in the film. I'm sure it's possible to do a three hour video essay on this movie, cataloging and listing every minute detail from every reality. But the takeaway will be the same. You can't fight the entirety of existence every single day. The stakes of this movie are the whole entirety of existence against one family unit. Whoa, slow down, metaphor alert. It's a beautiful movie with a beautiful message that I think when the world is, let's say, struggling somewhat, sometimes you need the happy, feel-good, kung fu comedy slapstick masterpiece, but also I think a really easy message for 2022 and beyond. Beware the nihilism bagel.